The Dell Precision T5810 was shipped with 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14 core Intel Xeon CPU. But unfortunately, I got the basic quad core Xeon E5 1620v3, which, in my humble opinion, I believe is responsible for why this workstation is so heavy. But I'm aware that there's one thing I can do to take this heavy workhorse from booting into Windows my all time high record of about 470 seconds to just 26 seconds. But before we dive into this system, let's quickly see exactly what we are up against. Right in front of it, we've got a DVD writer right here. We've got four USB ports, two of which are USB 3.0 and two USB 2.0. The power button is right here, although it feels a little bit soft for the major function it performs on this workstation. And right here, we've got the microphone and the headphone jacks. Right here are air vents, pretty impressive design. And I really do love the fact that it's a convertible tower machine, so you necessarily do not have to set it up vertically. The phone continues at the back of the machine where we've got the audio jacks right here, a serial port, a LAN port, additional USB port, PS2 port, more USB port, and obviously, the previous user had a LAN adapter installed. A graphic card is right here. I kind of suspect that this is an NVIDIA Quadro card given that this is a workstation. Lots of expansion slots, we'll definitely see what options we have much later. Right here is a massive 685 watts power supply. I'm pretty lucky here, I would say, as most of the models lying around on eBay have the 425 watts power supply. I imagine we need this lever here to disengage this power supply if we ever have to take it out and right here is a sticker if one thing stands out here is the fact that this machine is made in poland so let's go ahead and open this workhorse to see what's inside luckily there's nothing to unscrew here gaining access into this case is only possible with the help of this lever on the side now that this lever is lifted the side cover should just easily be lifted out just like that interestingly this machine still has a hard drive installed but i'm almost certain that this has been wiped clean Anyway, we'll quickly put this out. Luckily, no screws to battle here. Interestingly, it's a Seagate Barracuda drive, really nothing out of the ordinary. But obviously, this thing has been eating a lot of dust lately. But luckily, we have a second hard drive caddy. This should make our upgrade way much easier. For now, we can put this right back here. Like I imagine, this is an NVIDIA Quadro K620 card with a DVI and a display port. But unlike the hard drive, I must say that this card looks really clean. Never ate any dust like I would have expected. Well, probably it hasn't been used for a long time. This lever right here takes out the DVD drive compartment. Oops, that was way too easy to take out. For now, we're going to keep this right here. Now we take out the Intel Pro 1000 PCIe Ethernet adapter. So I'm guessing the previous user really prioritized internet speed and reliability. This is a mega huge air tunnel. Well, according to Dell, these are optional components and not all workstations shipped with this. I would have been alarmed if this didn't have any dust covering it. This stays here. I'm really loving the amazing design within this workstation so far. And that's the other one. We're going to take this out as well. Have you guys noticed that up until now, we've really don't had any need for a screwdriver? That's interesting. We are definitely going to do a lot of cleanup here on this machine. Luckily, I've got my reliable hand blower to take care of that. That's a 4 GB DDR4 2133MHz RAM module here. Well, that's pretty basic, I would say. I was expecting to see a much larger and probably a more faster 26 MHz DDR4 RAM, which this workstation also supports. This system can support up to 256 GB of DDR4 RAM, according to Dell, but I guess that would definitely be an overkill for a lot of you guys. It appears we keep getting welcomed by a large chunk of debris. Might just be the best time to give this system an initial cleanup. I guess this would be a lot lot better for everyone. Now it's time to welcome this bad boy to his new home. It's a one terabyte crucial SSD. Amazingly, these things are getting really cheap lately. Got this for a little under $40. I'll be leaving a purchase link in the description below. Feel free to check it out. Let's take it out respectfully. Obviously, it's a SATA SSD, pretty decent read and write speed, never had any problems since I've been using them. For this upgrade, we'll definitely need a 2.5 inch SSD caddy to get this mounted. And luckily, I have this lying around from a broken Dell Optiplex 9020 small form factor PC. Now, let's get this mounted on a 3.5 inch caddy and slide it right back in. 
I guess I can still make use of this 500 gigabyte mechanical drive for more storage. So let's get this mounted and replaced right here. I've got here a SATA wire power splitter cable, but luckily on this precision workstation, this will not be necessary. Should it be a Dell OptiPlace, then you will definitely be needing this. So let's go ahead and plug things right back in place. And luckily the SATA cables are pretty long enough for the SSD as well. All right, we are all good so far. So let's go ahead and replace the RAM sticks. Just to enable us to test out the system, I would definitely be jacking this up to a minimum of 64 megabytes. Hey, they are very good RAM days on Amazon at the moment. This workstation definitely deserves a much better Nvidia Quadro M4000 graphic card with an 8 GB of DDR5 memory, 4 DisplayPort 1.2, which can easily output 1080p and 1440p resolutions at 144 Hz. First and foremost, let's get the dust out of the way. This thing is quite heavy. So if you ever have to slot it on one of your PCIe slots, please ensure to take great care to avoid destroying the PCIe slots on your PC. So let's get this plugged into place. Alright, let's go ahead and clean up the pipes and replace them. It's time to replace the DVD compartment as well. Pretty impressive, not a single screw unlocked so far. Guess at this point we can go ahead and do the final cleanup. I can imagine that this workstation is going to remain closed for a long time. So it makes sense to keep things as clean as I possibly can. And then comes the side cover. Now that this reliable workstation is back together, let's see how the hardwares are doing. Okay, power indication is on, which is a good thing. Now, pretty much like the moment of truth. The Dell logo is out. Excellent, the splash screen looks good. Even then, we still need to check the setup. If for nothing else, at least to set the boot mode to EUFI. Then apply, exit. And once again, F5 key to take a good look at what the onboard diagnostics looks like. So that was a pretty fast initialization there. Cable test passed. PCIe bus test passed. DRAM controller spindle test for the CD drives looks good. Hard drive test still ongoing, but then all USB drives, network drives looks good. The video card literally needs no testing because that's a healthy Nvidia Quadro M4000 card for my main PC. That was a blast of turbo air right there from all the fans. Interestingly, they are all looking good. CPU stress test ongoing. On this workstation is a Xeon E5 1620V3. It's a quad core CPU with a maximum turbo frequency at 3.6 GHz and a 10 MB smart cache. This is pretty much the base CPU for the T5810. Like I said earlier, some of these workstations were shipped with 6, 8, 10, 12 and even the 14 core Xeon processors. Although I've not been so lucky to find the 12 and 14 core versions on eBay. Alright, memory tests all completed as well. And no problems have been found on this system so far. This should definitely be your wish when you buy a used workstation off of eBay. The longer, more comprehensive test will take up to 30 minutes. I really do not think I want to continue with that, as I really do feel the system is in excellent optical and technical condition. On this tab here, we have the results. Pretty impressive how many components were tested in so short time. As it looks, the revolution per minute for the CPU, memory, as well as the PCIe fans are all within limits. I pretty much do not hear any abnormally unusual sound from the system fans. And for a workstation, this is very impressive. Hard drive, CPU, and memory temperature readings all looking normal. And now let's see what the configuration is looking like. Interestingly, we've got the PCIe 3.0 and 2.0 by 16, and this workstation can take up to two full height and full length graphics card. Installed is an OEM Matshita DVD writer, and like we saw earlier, a 500GB Seagate Barracuda 3.5-inch HDD, as well as a 1TB 2.5-inch Crucial SSD. Processor socket LGA2011, as well as 8GB DDR4 Hynix RAM with error correcting codes. Although I've only upgraded the hard drive on this workstation, but I must say that I'm having a much better experience in terms of speed, but definitely I'm going to be upgrading the processor pretty soon.